<laughs> Hello, we're yes. back. What's up, Jess? What's up? Long time. I know. Feels good to be back. Yes, we're back, ready for action. I'm so happy you made it back in the country. You've been gone everywhere. Dude, I feel like I was in limbo until like the 5th of January. I was just floating in <laughs> space. Nothing made sense. I was waking up at like 4 a.m., falling asleep at 4 p.m., you know. It was it was a really weird time, but oh. back where everything makes sense, everyone speaks normal, not like all, oh, hello, hello, uh, what, what's good, bruv, you know. It was, oh, you've improved on your accent. That's pretty I? impressive. I think we need to do another skit pretty soon. I know. Who should I do next time, Molly? Yes. <laughs> get, get some scouser. Yes, That's scouser. scouser. Not a uh, sorceress. <laughs> 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 according to Cody Garber. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, uh I didn't get to go to Liverpool or Liverpool. Wait, that's not even how they say it. But they say it in a weird way. I just can't remember how they say it. But I didn't get to go there while I was in London, but I did get to go to Great Britain top team and get some training in and then we did Cage Warriors with Wilson Hayes. He won his fight and then we partied until 2 a.m which was probably like 7 p.m here Oof. so <laughs> <laughs> so i felt like i was young even though i probably would have been falling asleep about the same time <laughs> that's so nice i ended yeah. up getting accidentally drunk on new year's eve oh nice and i stayed up past the ball dropping which no. normally i am in bed way before that thing <laughs> drops and i wake up and it's like oh it's a new year a new me yeah uh, but that was not the case i spent the whole day feeling really crappy oh in, in bed <laughs> like, poor jess it's it's because i'm you know i'm getting getting older i know you tried to party like a rock star it, accidentally that was not my <laughs> intention but it, it happened um you know i just can't be letting that happen where it was awful we have to be careful you know like the older we get we have, the more carefully we have to plan out our party nights when i was a kid i could drink all i wanted i would rehydrate with beer after muay thai you know yeah. like I, i'd do like four hours of muay thai which i cannot do now but <laughs> <laughs> i did like four hours of muay thai hit a pad sparring a clinch class and then we go down to a beer or go down to the bar afterwards and rehydrate with a pint or a few or a pitcher and then i'd be up bright and bushy tail the next morning like let's do it again go to my job go drink or go train and then go drink and then wash rinse repeat but now i have to plan that shit out i can't have more than two drinks a night without properly hydrating yeah. afterwards with yeah. water <laughs> yeah not beer um eating my vegetables my making sure that i have my carbs as well so i don't get drunk off of the first two drinks and yeah a lot yeah it's a lot that's why i was a little bit perturbed with adam when he <laughs> when he hit me up you know for your your birthday celebration he wanted us to meet at a bar at 9 p.m oh on a sunday yeah. on a sunday yeah <laughs> and i was actually sick the day before oh, sorry so. a thursday on a thursday yeah in I the was, middle of the week yeah right day before sparring that's the kicker. He just wanted me to feel good about myself. He's like, I know Angela can handle it. So <laughs> she'll go punch hungover Jess in the head and feel good about herself. <laughs> Why are you doing this? Why are you doing it to me? <laughs> I told him afterwards, I was like, may I request <laughs> next time that we meet at five o'clock like adults. Yes, five o'clock is a good drinking day. <laughs> it's almost like your day drinking, but then you go home and you can just fall asleep. You don't have to continue your day afterwards. Yeah, it's amazing. So, yeah, it's perfect time to start drinking. That's why That's why happy hour exists at that time. I get it now. I didn't, you just made the connection I for me. I get it. Damn, that makes sense. Yeah. It makes total sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. Man, so also I had a birthday. Yes. So we take these off. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking oh, yeah. about me. It's my birthday. Well, it was on the Whoops. 12th. So I just turned, and I don't like saying this, but I just turned the big 3 8. Oh my God. I know. I'm, wow. I'm an old, old, old lady. Old, old, old easy, girl. Easy, easy. <laughs> old, old, old. Easy. I'm an old mare ready to be 
sent to the glue factory. Then what the fuck does that make me? I don't know. I'm joking. <laughs> Listen, I just keep getting better. Yeah. Like a fine wine. I just yeah, keep like getting better. Exactly. You get, you've gotten curvier. You've gotten yes. uh, more confident. Yes. You've gotten uh, better as a fighter, you know? True, true. Um, yeah, you might not have that angst. <laughs> <laughs> that got you into the cage in the first place, but you don't need it anymore. Because I had experience, I'm a vet. <laughs> yeah, you don't need Moxie anymore. You get, you been had that. Yeah. <laughs> now you can just relax and be in there. You don't have to be angry at the person you're fighting. So angry. Yeah. <laughs> so angry. I mean, I'm still, I'm still a little angry, but you know, it's for the most part, I've done enough work to like, you know, yeah, be centered and balanced, and you know, still. Every once in a while. A little like. <laughs> yeah. I see it when uh, when you get close to a submission. You're like three steps away from finishing it. And your face goes from do to do to. <laughs> I just get really excited. Just like, <laughs> it's like I a just demented really excited. smile. <laughs> I get really excited. And then like the more that somebody like kind of like. Falls into the trap. It, yeah, I get even more excited. And then when like, they like kind of struggle, but I know it's not going to work. It's like, I'm like, it's already over. Just let it happen. Yeah, stop trying. Just stop twerk. it. Just stop it. You're being silly. This is going to happen. It's going to happen. I love it. I call that wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> you just know. It's just like, <laughs> gotcha, bitch. Uh, it's a great feeling. It is. It is. You need it in spurts, but you don't need it the whole fight. And I think that's what you get better at managing the longer you're in the sport mm -hmm. is when to bring out that like final blow kind of energy yeah. and when to cruise and relax and pick your shots and uh, set the traps that you're eventually going to go to, you know? So, <laughs> So yeah, it, it's not it's not a death sentence to be an older fighter. It's not uh, something to be ashamed of, as much as I feel like it used to be. I think it was more of a stigma before. Man, I feel like I feel like sometimes that commentary booth. Well, they just, just have they have their talking points, right? And one thing that they love to talk about is how old a fighter is or how young a fighter is, and there's no in between. You're either old or young, or they just don't say shit about your age, you know? And I've, I've used to be, I was very recently in the area where they don't say shit about my age. This but year they're going to talk about it though. No, like they're going to talk about it since I turned like 32. They've been talking about it. Well, you know, she's, she's pretty old to be coming back into the, like, since I got back into the UFC, they've been saying that. And that was a long ass time ago. So it's it's really rough, but I think I've lived through people being okay with older fighters out there. So now I I finally crossed over into that. Okay, yeah, like before we were being rude, but now you're actually old. <laughs> <laughs> now we're justified in judging you. <laughs> uh. I just, I mean, I feel like it's all a projection. And, it yeah, is. They're just. You're only as old as you feel. And I feel uh, like a sprightly 25-year-old. Oh, wow. That's impressive. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like I'm in my early, I mean, my back feels like it's in its 60s, but, you know. Oh, I'm not talking about when I wake up. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, I feel like, you know, I feel like I just hit 30. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking, I'm, I feel like 25 after the first warm-up round, after I did my stretches, put some Bengay on, you know, <laughs> the tiger bomb is everywhere, you know, I'm, I'm feeling the heat. <laughs> Of that blood rushing through my veins. Then, then I feel like a sprightly 25 year old. Yeah. I recently discovered that um, taking like really hot showers before Ooh. I go to train is very helpful because otherwise it takes me a long time to warm up. Dude, I do that every day. I, I never. Why didn't you ever tell me this? Well, because I, I just hate being cold. Like, <laughs> that's, I just thought it was a black person thing mm. because. We're not made for this cli for climates that are colder. <laughs> like right now, it's freezing in San Diego. I'm so mad. It is like 60 degrees, and it's raining. Ah, uh, it's the worst. It's 
raining. Yeah, and it's dangerous out in those streets. I saw two accidents on my way home from Open Mat today. Oh, no. Like, right in front of me. No. Yeah. Dude, I'm not surprised, though, because whenever I go somewhere in the rain, there'll be one pocket where everything's backed up, and then you see somebody got in, like, a nasty little fender bender or something on the side of the road every time. San Diego just cannot handle weather at all. (laughs) <laughs> they, they, they just, just freak like, out. They start malfunctioning. And instead of driving slower and more cautiously, this? they're like, I just got to get home. And yeah. so they drive even faster. I'm like, you, <laughs> you idiot. Now that you're hydroplaning make- and now you're on the embankment. And oh my now God. we're calling an ambulance. Yeah. They never got the hydroplaning discussion that we got before we got our licenses. Because that was a thing. Like, when is it most dangerous uh, when you're in a rainstorm? And uh, you have to know it's when it just coats the the cr- concrete and everything's really slick. And I think San Diegans, they see the clouds and they see like drizzle and they're like, all right, let's go. <laughs> let's get home fast. Get home where it's safe. Yeah. And then they spin out and crash. It's very sad. Yeah. It was, it was a stressful drive home. Yeah. Well, be careful out there. I know you're in camp. We need you to get to the scales and everything healthily. No bumps and bruises from these stupid drivers or whatnot. Only from training partners. Yeah. That's my job. <laughs> you do a great job at that. Thanks. I try. I think uh, every camp you have, you have gotten me pretty good. I think um, my best weapon is my hip bone. You're a dick with that hip bone. Dude, my hip bone is so sharp. Like, bah! When I hit that sprawl, like... I'm like, why are you doing that so... <laughs> like, what? And I'm not trying to. It's just there. It's, it's in a good spot height-wise, mm. I think. Mm. I think my legs are just long enough that I hit right on the forehead of people who are shooting on me. <laughs> like, I, I, it must be, like, like, biological or something because everyone complains about my hip bone. Yeah, if you've noticed, I don't really go for takedowns against you. I just wait till you try and take me down. And then okay. I'm like, it's, we're here. It's yeah, fine. thank you. I'm like, it's just too risky. Thank you for starting the grapple. <laughs> like, just, I mean, we both want to be there. Yeah. Just, it, you, please, I insist. <laughs> I insist. <laughs> I will not brandish my hip bone. <laughs> In front of your face because I care. (laughs) (laughs) It really hurts. Oh, man. So, yeah, that's that's my favorite weapon. Um, But how has Fight Camp been going? We can update everyone on that. You, I think you announced your fight an episode or two ago. Mm -hmm. But remind everyone what's happening next. So I'll be fighting on March 4th. Um, It's a pay-per-view card, UFC 280. I think so. Six. Double check. Yeah, double check for me because, yeah, I'm not great at that. (laughs) And um, I got rescheduled to fight Tabitha Ricci. A little baby shark. Yes. Um, Yeah, so I'm excited. Camp's going well. I'm doing some good stuff and I'm already in shape. And um, getting into camp in shape is really nice instead of having to like work really hard and like die and, you know, deal with all of the ups and downs and the emotions and stuff like that of trying to get in shape. But, um, yeah, so I'm very, very excited. I'm guessing you're no longer part of Team uh, Short Notice Fight. No. <laughs> you know what? I was really, I was excited about it, and then I got sick. And I was yeah. like, this is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a lot of stress on your body to get in shape that fast. Yeah. And a lot of times people do get sick from just trying to, rush camp and hit your sprints and get that hard pad work in and get the hard spars in and get ready and you only have like two or three weeks to do all that and that's normally when like the immune system kind of takes a dive so Mm -hmm. two weeks into camp after you know you start pushing the intensity i have always had the mindset because of that reason is to um kind of back off after two Mm -hmm. weeks and just make sure that i'm really taking care of myself and kind of like pump the brakes just a little bit Mm -hmm. because you know the immune system and the body all that kind of stuff is just kind of um being like thrown out of whack yeah with the intensity so it's hard it's definitely hard to do yeah it's (laughs) it's a lot it's a lot so um this time you have more than enough time maybe almost too much time was it hard 
not freaking out just by looking at how far down that date was when you first got the matchup? It actually, it kind of was. And I tried not to like fixate on that. Plus it was during the holidays when I found out. So Uh. everybody's gone. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, nobody, nobody is training hard during the holidays. Like yeah. there's, there's no fights book. Like the UFC was not like, they were all on vacation. Everybody mm-hmm. was like, we're not working. We're not doing this. Nothing. So there was just, there weren't a lot of like bodies. Everybody's traveling home for the holidays and just, you know, different <laughs> kind of mindset. Yeah. And so I just tried to focus on what I could personally do, mm-hmm. you know, for myself. And so that was starting to push the cardio and, you know, pad work and just do what I could. Nice. Uh, and now you're in shape. And I'm in shape. Yeah. There Look you at go. That. Look at that. <laughs> now you take a bunch more breaks. That worked yeah. out. <laughs> Pump the brakes as much as you want now. Good job. So uh, it is UFC 285. It's going to be in Vegas, I believe. And we just got a big fight announced on your card. Yeah. Fuck it. Do you want to say it or should I? You say it. You're so, so excited. excited. I'm so You're excited. So excited. About it. Say it. John Jones versus Cyril Gunn. At heavyweight, John Jones is finally coming back. Yo. He finally got his stuff together. Not going to. Uh, I mean, not, no, I'm just not kidding. hard I'm on sorry. that. What? I'm oh sorry. my God. Just Jessica. Kidding. It was a joke. Jessica. I know. Why <laughs> did I do? What did I do? You just can't have, let anyone else have shine <laughs> during your card. <laughs> it all has to be about Jessica. Uh, yeah, that's going to be nuts. So it's finally happened, but um, it's bittersweet because. Francis Ngannou got let go. I feel like it, it was his decision, though. It was his decision, yes, but I just, I'm sad to see him go. I'm sad to see him go, too. He was, um, so I got to say, like, sometimes with heavy, not sometimes, a lot of times <laughs> with heavyweights, um, you know, they have that one-punch knockout power, and they don't necessarily um, try to, like, harness or refine their skills because they can always rely on one punch. That'll win them the fight. And, um, I mean, not not always in all cases, but that's just a trend that I've seen. And Ningano, I was really impressed with him. He was starting to do, like, learn groundwork, and he was really starting to refine his skills because he didn't have a ton of... MMA experience yeah when he got thrown to the vision but he's just so big and powerful Mm -hmm. such a presence that he was you know he claimed the belt through that so you know I I was just starting to you know get a a sense of who he was as a fighter and who he was becoming so it's sad to see him go same and I just I'm really curious about what the UFC deal was that he turned down Yes, I want to know those numbers. I want to know the numbers. I think, I'm not sure if people picked up on it, but Dana used some clever wording. Mm -hmm. He did not say we offered him the biggest payday out of all our champions. He said we offered him the biggest payday out of all of our heavyweights. Yeah. Our heavyweight champions, including Chuck Liddell. Like... That was a long time ago, Dana. That was a long time ago. Yo, come on. So he, PR-wise, he made it seem like it was a big deal that he passed up. But I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Ngano was just asking for Conor McGregor money and that got turned down because I think there's a big gap between Conor McGregor and Chuck Liddell. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think, um, you know, Ngano's going to go out and... He had all those uh, boxing matches that he was thinking about doing that should have been, that should map out to be bigger paydays. So I'm hoping that he's able to do that and be lucrative with that. But like you said, seeing him evolve and get better at wrestling, um, he did things that no one was able to do against Cyril Gaunt. Like, Mm -hmm. no one was able to do that. And I don't know if it was because Cyril had to be so aware of of Ngano striking of his power that he didn't even think about the takedown, but it really worked out for him. So I love seeing him put everything together. And it's, I'm just sad to see him go to something like boxing where you're not going to see any of that hard work that he put in. I, I don't, I understand that there's really good money in boxing. However, and he does, he does have that like one punch knockout power, but boxing is hard. 
it's hard for MMA fighters to go into boxing <clears throat> is a really challenging transition. Yeah. And I'm I'm curious to see how he's going to do because he has not like I haven't seen that kind of like boxing like uh striking IQ from mm-hmm. him. So it's really it'll be really interesting, but I know that they can probably make big fights. I yeah. just want to I'm curious to see how well he's going to do. Yeah. Because it's completely different. And I wonder if they're just going to give him the big fight like Connor, or are they going to let him work his way up like a Jake Paul type? Uh, like what's going to happen with his career? Is it going to be a career or is it going to be a freak show fight? You know, and I feel like it's probably going to be a freak show fight for a payday that would have been bigger than if Ngannou fought through his entire champion contract and won every fight. I feel like it's going to have to be because he is already fighting as a professional mixed martial artist, so he can't do amateur boxing. Mm -hmm. He really, I don't, I'm pretty sure there's a rule against that. Once you've gone pro, you can't go back and do amateur. He's not going to do amateur boxing, but he could get opponents that weren't that great that were maybe a little smaller or that were that had that were a bit chinny you know yeah they do they do do that a lot in boxing Mm, there's um you know they're very big on like uh favorable matchmaking Mm -hmm. to you know cultivate their talent and stuff like that yeah yeah but i just don't know if that would be the route that he should go I think it's probably going to be one big deal fight, like a Tyson Fury or something like that. Just like a big ass fight. Yeah. Gets a lot of money, win or lose. Probably going to lose. But, you know, the maybe is what puts people in the seats. And then he'll be good. He can chill. He can retire. (laughs) I think that sometimes that frustrates me or it, it bums me out sometimes. I mean, it's great that there's opportunities for, you know, MMA fighters to do like cross promotional kind of stuff mm-hmm. um, as far or going to different, um, to different disciplines and stuff like that. But it's hard because MMA fighters are not, um, what was that sound? Sorry. I got really distracted. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought. Was that Butcher? Or it was that Adam? Been, I don't it know. It could have been either one. Either one. Dude, I don't, the mics probably didn't even pick it up, so we probably just look crazy. (laughs) That's really funny. It, um, it, it, it's great that there's an opportunity for it, but sometimes it bothers me that fighter, MMA fighters specifically go into other promotions and they're, you know, going to be the underdog. They're at a slight disadvantage in, you know, certain ways because boxing for MMA is completely different than boxing Mm -hmm. for boxing. Just like kickboxing and, you know, grappling and, yeah. you know, all these different disciplines where everyone is just focused on that base, that discipline and MMA fighters need to be good or well-rounded enough to like be knowledgeable in each discipline. So sometimes it, it frustrates me and sometimes I can see that it's a great opportunity, mm-hmm. but there's just, um, it's a little bit more challenging for success in some aspects. Yeah, well, I think all the experiments where somebody from another discipline who was a big deal came into MMA, they always go bad for the person coming into MMA. So they stopped doing that a long time ago. They're just like, fuck that shit. Yeah. <laughs> you come to me because I probably make a lot more money than you do in your sport. That's way fucking harder, you know? So There were only a couple people that, I mean, there was CM Punk and then James Tooney. Tony, yeah, James, James Tony. Tony is I always the want one. to call him Tony. Yeah, he was a little cartoony. Yeah, in that a little fight. Tony. He was, he was like, Got <laughs> ankle pipped by, yeah. by Randy Couture. Yeah. Uh, I feel like there was a couple more, but I can't think of them. Maybe they weren't like big deal fights, but just yeah. even even just coming in. Um, i trying to think who else did that. There's a few. There's a few, but not not as big as those two. And I think James Tony is the one I always think of is why MMA fighters go to boxing and not the other way around because yeah. that's what happens. Yeah. Um, but uh, on another note, what do you think about the matchup that we have with Cyril Gaon and John Jones? I'm really excited about it. <laughs> I'm fascinated by it. I, I just think what um, Cyril does is really, really impressive for a heavyweight. He's a smaller heavyweight mm. he's, he's not a huge I mean he's a he's a large human but 
he's usually outsized by a lot of the heavyweights, mm. you know? And the way he moves and stays in the pocket, he has he has beautiful striking and he's, you know, fairly well rounded. Still needs a little bit more work on the ground mm. and the grappling aspect, but he does a really good job. Um and somebody like Jones, I could see trying to take it to the ground. Mm-hmm. Um and I think that it's just an interesting matchup. Like, I don't know what's going to happen because John Jones is a big dude. He was always big for light heavyweight. And I think that um, with all the time out of the sport, he's probably put on some really good size. And he's probably huge for a heavyweight right now. Yeah, he looks insane. He looks crazy. I hate to bring up Connor again, but he <laughs> they both did these like weird metamorphoses outside of competing. Where Were they outside of the testing pool? Did they temporarily retire? I don't think Jones did. I think he was in the USADA testing pool the whole time, but he got thick. Like he got yeah. real thick. Shins are still the same size as mine, but <laughs> <laughs> still has little twig legs, little twiglet legs, but that's because they're long as fuck, and that's how he kicks people in the head with them. Um, but yeah, he got he got really swole. I think he finally feels comfortable at that weight, and I think that was a a big part of his stalling, aside from you know the getting in trouble and stuff. Another part of it was just feeling comfortable at heavyweight because you have to transform your body. And now he looks like a heavyweight. Like yeah. before he looked like he could, you look like you could make this or that. But now you look at him and you're like, biggest. <laughs> <laughs> you're one of the biggest. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it, it'll, it'll be interesting to see like how he implements himself in the division. I mean, yeah. he could, he's so athletic. He's, he's so talented, um, so powerful. And I could see him being dominant in, in heavyweight, just like he was in light heavyweight. Yeah. And just giving everybody a hard time. And it's, it's a bit unfair to not get to see what John Jones is working with, with a lesser, a lesser, um, what do you call it? Just lesser stake fight. You know what I mean? The stakes are so high in this fight. And Cyril Gunn doesn't really know who he's preparing for because John Jones hasn't fought in however many years. He's huge. He's probably going to have to play the game a little differently, maybe rely more on his power instead of movement or um, maybe switching styles will be a little more tiring for him, like going from striking to takedowns. That might take a little more energy with a bigger frame. Like you really, there's a lot of question marks that uh, Cyril Gon's team is going to have to just figure out in the fight with John Jones. So that's going to be a, a really exciting thing for the fans too, is to see what happens. Cause I don't think anyone has any idea except for, Jones's people, you know, and maybe they don't know either, you know, like, (laughs) like, uh, like it's also, you also wonder what mental state is he going to be in when he steps in there because he's been through some shit. He's, he's created some chaos, you know, and it, it, a lot of it stems from just not being okay, you know? So I'm, Wondering if he's going to make it to the stage and if he's going to be mentally there. And I hope he is because I love watching him fight. Um, But, you know, there are a lot of people who hope he isn't, (laughs) who hope he doesn't, you know. it's uh, But that's what brings the fans. Absolutely. When they hate you, when they love you, that's like exactly where you want to be as a popular fighter because you'll never not be talked about. You have to be polarizing. Mm-hmm. You have to have people want you to win or to lose. <laughs> yes, no in between. That is what they want. You can either be old or young. <laughs> there is no in between. <laughs> oh, you're 30? You are old. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Nothing but old. Yeah, so that's going to be a pretty killer card. Good job getting on that thing. Yeah, I'm excited about it. And um, we had... Um, we had a pretty fun card last night. We we're filming this on Sunday, and we just came off. Was it a fun card? I know. I'm like, I'm like that's a lie. I was like, <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you were like, uh, that's a lie. 
that, that is incorrect. <laughs> that is not what I experienced. You Angela. didn't experience fun? I did not. <laughs> and you know what? It had been... So- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm not sorry. Oh. Listen, I've been waiting for weeks to watch, you know, some UFC fights. I've been, you know, watching boxing and other sports <laughs> and, you know, binging on, you know, whatever during my fight camp. I mm. wanted to... And see some blood and guts. Yes. Yeah. And um, you know, maybe maybe the UFC they just wanted to have like kind of um, like a a, a, a pallet warmer upper yeah. kind of thing. You Warm know, just fight. like yeah, just be like you know, here it is. An We're aperitif. not going to give yes. <laughs> <laughs> a bouge mousse, a bouge mousse. A bouge mousse? How do you say what that? What is that? It's the appetizer. Oh, I forget. I don't um, know that one. It's, it's, I was thinking, what is like, it? Or, a mousse bouche. A mousse bouche. How Thank do you, you spell Adam? that? Oh, A M U S. Just mousse. how it sounds. Yes. Oh, and a mousse bouche or a mousse glouche is a single bite size hors d'oeuvre. Oh, I love those. <laughs> yes. Just to get, you know, your your taste buds going. Yeah, that's a perfect description of what that fight card was. Yeah, I'm fancy like that. You're so fancy. <laughs> God so damn. Fancy and you and Adam. <laughs> <laughs> you and Chef Adam. <laughs> Even though you couldn't pronounce it. I could not, but he knew what I meant. You know those horse derbies. <laughs> <laughs> I love them horse derby fight cards. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, there were compelling parts of the fight card. Uh, Where? Well, um... I'll wait. Wait, what happened again? Mm-hmm. Dan Ige. Dan okay. Ige, that was compelling. That's one. He was on a skid, and he got his knockout win against um, Damon. Damon Jackson, yep. I believe. And, you know, but, like... You know, Damon Jackson isn't top tier like the guys that he had lost to, but he was on a win streak. Um, he was a good opponent, and Ige was able to knock him out. So that was a big deal for him. He cried in his post-fight speech. That always... His post-fight speech got me. It always gets easy. Because like, we've been there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He said, first win in two years and he's in there crying after getting a knockout like the emotions are so high because you put so much time and effort into perfecting your craft and then you go out there and it doesn't go the way you want it to and you feel like you failed everyone you failed everyone who helped you who coached you you failed yourself your your family your teammates and of course they don't feel that way at least not the the good ones, <laughs> a couple, a couple shitty ones will feel that way. But yeah. the the good guys, the the ones who mean something, they're not gonna feel that way. But that's how you feel internally. And he felt that way for two years. So yeah. like, it it, it was time. really cool to see him get that. And we both can relate to that yeah. situation. It it just sucks to be on a lose streak, um, especially when everyone's watching when. People are expecting great things from you, and I think yeah, the toughest thing about being like a an MMA fighter in the UFC is there's there's just so much pressure on it, mm-hmm. and you're you're only as good as your last fight. Mm-hmm. You're only as relevant as your next fight. Yeah, and it could be a long time in between the next time you fight because if you fight, you're not going to get rebooked as as quickly, or you could get cut. Mm-hmm. And if you, you know get booked and you have an exciting matchup and they're pushing you and then you under deliver. I mean, say even if you win, but you under deliver it, they're like, ah, eh, they're not as good. You know, there's yeah. just, there's just so much writing on it and so much potential for, you know, a letdown or, or something amazing happening. It just, it can be a lot. It can be like crippling it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a huge roller coaster to go through and to be, persevering through all the naysayers and you know the doubters the haters um through that two years people telling you to quit or telling you you're not good enough and allowing yourself to stay focused and stay determined it it really is something that a lot of people would have quit and i think we both have like stories where like a lot of people would have quit if they had if they got dealt we got dealt in the ufc and 
when you're able to overcome it and get that win finally and just even just showing up, it resonates with people. You know, uh, mm-hmm. I know I know a lot of people hit you up after your first win back against Loopy. And, um, you know, even the last my last couple of fights, um, people hit me up and they were like, yo, I'm so happy for you. Like you didn't get robbed. Like <laughs> <yeah. laughs> we were praying you didn't get robbed and it happened. So being able to un- overcome those big humps, like not a little bump and then yeah. you're back and swinging and everything's going great. But big fucking letdowns over and over again uh it's a big deal so that's why the danny gay thing i was like <laughs> no I, I i completely yeah i can completely relate i can completely empathize and just understand like that was a huge moment for him and i'm really i'm really happy and to see somebody so gracious and humble and um vulnerable mm-hmm. was was really inspiring to see so another cool thing that happened was uh well like eh, i guess it's cool um (laughs) i'm like eh, in the context of the card in the context of this card it was cool well i I was pretty surprised that strickland showed up what do you mean not surprised that he showed up but i was i was surprised that he took the fight and i wasn't super surprised that he won but I am always surprised when he wins doing the same shit he always does. Yeah. It's the same shit every fight. So I I thought that he would take the fight. Like, I wasn't surprised he took the fight. And I wasn't surprised that he started, like, you know, getting out in front. Mm -hmm. Because he has that, like... It's got to be so frustrating to fight someone yes, like him dude. because he never stops coming forward. He never like, um, and he has so much pressure and this like rangy mm-hmm. pressure. And if you don't know how to like get under it or angle out, it could be a really, really tough night. It's like some people's pressure. You don't really know what it feels like until you're in front of them. I think Strickland has that effect on everyone that he fights where it takes a while. Even even uh, Alex Perea, he was backing up. He was giving him space. He didn't do that with Izzy. Mm. You know, he was in Izzy's. He was pushing Izzy back. But with with Strickland, he pushed him back. He was in his face. It it is a lot to deal with. And if you don't have that uh, patience and that precision with your striking, especially striking moving backwards, then you're going to have a hard night against Strickland. It can be really frustrating and, and dismantling. And it can kind of it can start like switching your mindset to be like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. Like, why is this guy pushing me back? Why is this guy mm-hmm. doing this to me? And there are people like that. I always say, like, Julia Penny is one of those people. Yes. That yes. she is just so tenacious and yeah. so pressure. She's not great in any one area, mm-hmm. but she has pressure and she's strong and she does not stop. Yeah, she has those uh, those press takedowns. I don't know. You use the word press, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. She has the press takedowns where she's just like, I'm going to take you down. I don't care if I'm like bending over <laughs> in a weird way and my head's not in the right spot. I'm on your legs. I'm not letting go until your butt's on the ground. Yeah. And it fucking works for her. Like she goes 110% for everything she does. And that's why... Uh, she was easy for Nunez to plan against after they had already fought. But the first time, Nunez was flustered. Was like, what? Like, what is happening? <laughs> said, You're not doing this to me. Yeah, like, why are you just <laughs> eating my punches and, and coming forward and hitting me with more punches? Um, and that's what Strickland does. And it's uh, his kind of weird way of blocking, too. I think um, <laughs> I, like to call it, I like to call it throwing up gang signs. <laughs> Where he's like, <laughs> I've noticed that too. Yeah, it's, it, he gets his whole shoulder in the way or in his whole arm in the way. And he kind of cages his his head from the shot. So if you're head hunting against Strickland, you don't hit that much because he always has like this big pull of an arm in your way. And it's not a traditional way of teaching people how to block. You do like the turtle blocks or you learn how to move your head or you parry. There's all sorts of things that have 
I guess they're more predictable. Mm-hmm. But when you have someone who does this all the time, you're like punching his elbows. You're you're punching his shoulder. You're never getting through. You're wasting energy on trying to get through. It's, it can be really frustrating. So not only do you have this wall closing in on you, but all the counters that usually work against your training partners aren't working because this guy is blocking all crazy and deflecting everything that you throw. So it's, it's a lot to kind of navigate when you're in there because uh, I think Strickland's style looks a lot easier to break down than it actually is. I agree with that. I can see that, definitely. It's like when you watch uh, Diaz Brothers and they're outboxing someone and it looks like they're punching in slow motion, but every time they land a jab, the guy reacts like crazy. And you're like, what? What's happening? Like <laughs> that punch doesn't look like it hurt that much, but the guy's nose is exploded. And Strickland has that kind of same energy where when he throws a punch, it looks like it's coming in slow motion. And then there's a push at the end and you can see the person absorb all that and not want it anymore and start running from him. So, uh, yeah, good, good for him. You know, good for him. Got his win. He was able to get that win back from that very, Razor close King and Air decision. Um, yeah. And he gets to compete twice. Last fight of the new year and first fight of the new year. Yeah, pretty cool. Or last fight of the old year. You know what I mean? I gotcha. Yeah. So good for good for old Stricky boy. Oh, crazy Stricky boy with his weird. <laughs> weird. His weirdness. His, his weird combat weirdness. boots post fight. His, yeah. Know, what was that about? That Why did you know. send me that? I don't know. I just thought it was <laughs> strange. New, what did it say? New boot scooting? Yeah. Oh, I hate that so much. That's your people. I know. <laughs> I know. It's all right. Yeah, country people. When's, a, when's the next stagecoach? Summer. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I actually, when I was in London, I sparred a girl that I trained with in Thailand and Muay Thai. Um, and her name is Grace Spicer. She's like ranked number one in the UK right now in Muay Thai. So she's a really cool chick. And she is like born and raised in the UK, but she loves country music. Interesting. It makes no sense. It's yeah, not it really interesting. doesn't. It's stupid. <laughs> Bite your tongue. But. She said she'd come through to train, uh, and I was like, okay, well, you know, if you come through during stagecoach, then me and Jess will go to stagecoach with yes. you. Yes. And we'll get our little new boots and do our new boot scooting yeah. and all that, get some cowboy hats, cowgirl hats, and yeah, go line dancing or something. So if that happens, I'm Come down. through. I'm down to come through. Okay, cool. Yeah. Anything else? We should, oh, oh, we're getting close to our bed, but we got a few more minutes. No, we have some stuff. Yeah. We still have some stuff. Don't get all all fired up and ready to go. Yeah. What else? <laughs> go for it. I feel like I've been talking a lot. No, you've been talking a lot. Okay. <laughs> a lot, but you know, you're like, you're on a roll, so I don't want to interrupt you. <laughs> I've been, uh, I've been in chill mode all day so i finally okay. have someone to talk to i i get it i get it I like mean, I, adam will talk to me we've just been staring at our phones all day <laughs> to watch the tv <laughs> i had open mat today so there was that i interacted a little oh bit, you had little social bit. time i did good job i did it's always awkward and i weird hate for being me. social it's weird. Okay, so I asked, I, I put up like a question thing for the first time oh, on my Instagram. I didn't okay. know what I was doing, but I think I did it right. Good job. And I think some people have some questions, but I just don't know how to find it. Oh, God. Jessica, I don't know give how to find the fucking questions. Find it for me. Goodness. I'm All right. So what you want to do is go to your story that you posted. Mm-hmm. Oh, where is it? Where is the story? Go to the story for me, story. please. <laughs> Okay. Oh, there it is. So you have. Oh no, that's votes. Eh. Go back. Okay. Okay. So you swipe up, then yeah. all these little buttons. Yeah, are that thing. Questions. Okay. So I said that I would answer <laughs> some stuff. Oh, promising people things. 
that they might regret. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Big Papa's MMA said, can oh. you ask Angie to start unblocking some people? Um, <laughs> so anytime I like post a picture of you and I on my page, yeah. or, like for the two straws, we always get comments about like, hey, can you ask Angela to unblock <laughs> me? And I said, listen, I'll talk to the warden, but you do the crime, you do the time. Yeah. So I don't know what you said. They're like, I didn't say anything. I'm like, mm, I feel like you did because she doesn't just go around blocking people. They know. They know exactly what I did or yeah. what they did. So I go scorched earth sometimes. <laughs> it, it don't come on my page being passive aggressive mm -mm. and liking comments that somebody else said that you know are shitty. Oh, so I don't ever look at that. Sometimes when I do that, because every <clears throat> every now and then, People will go crazy on my page and try to bring me down, you know, especially after a loss or something like that. So I'll wait. I'll wait it out. Shitty comment, top of my feed, maybe 50 likes. I'll go through every one of those guys and I'll like every fucking person that liked that shitty comment. And then I'll block the person who said it <laughs> but the passive aggressive haters they think that i'm not gonna do that i mean who does that but it really cleans up your feed so a lot it's, it's a lot is very rare now that i'll get like a nasty comment on my instagram or whatever because i do that because i block everyone who's been shitty and who's had the nerve to like a comment saying that I should retire or that I should go to the Invicta or that, or like, you know, just rude stuff. Um, There's, that's so unnecessary. And I block people who talk about my friends. I mean, like, if I post a picture of my friend and you want to talk shit about my friend, I block you. Mm. I block everyone who liked that comment. You know, like, I, I go scorched earth. And I think it just, like, I, I really wasn't doing social media um hardcore before i was an mma fighter like i only started it for my job yeah and it just makes me angry that i can't be as open and as free as i could before i was a minor celebrity so it it, it like pisses me off when people want to come into my little safe space and like shit all over it you know Absolutely. like don't don't piss on don't piss all over my like nice little comfy area. Like get the fuck out. Yeah, so that's take what that I shit do to your house and make your house a mess. Yeah. So tell big Papa, he was probably liking some comments, passive aggressively or talking some shit or doing something. And he knows why he got blocked. So sorry, buddy. Well, there you go. Big Papa. No <laughs> Follow go, us on two straws. <laughs> <laughs> I think he does too. Hey. Um, <laughs> So somebody said, when you fight again, we already discussed that March 4th. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Oh, what's Nesra and Ghanu? We already talked about that. Oh, see, we're hitting all the fan questions. Yes. We're so good yes. I'm not at our that. jobs. I'm not saying that out loud. Oh, say it. I would kiss you from your beautiful head to your sexy toes. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> nice. Yes, same. That's nice. <laughs> um, we already talked about that. Jones and uh, gone. Um, any ideas for your fortieth birthday? Sorry if I counted which ones. In, uh, which ones in your turn on this? What? What? <laughs> I don't know what he meant by that. But ideas for my 40th birthday. Ooh, that I, sounds like a good cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> that we can leave for our premium content. I know. Um, unless you want to. No, no, no. You're <laughs> right. You're right. We can switch it over and we can finish answering the rest of these questions. Because hey. there's many, many more. Ooh. So. Good job. Get back with us on Fight Pass for our exclusive content. Uh, we love you. We missed you. See you soon, babies. Bye. Bye.